Hello, my name is Paul. I'm with Logix Magazine, and today I'm going to give you a test on the 23 algorithms every PLC programmer should know. Now, <clears throat> I use the term algorithm, even though very, very few PLC programmers use that term. But algorithm just means recipe, and you want a recipe that you can that you can put and use to create a template and a template so that you become efficient at at building um, a solid program. So this test I'm gonna give you, it will be able to help you understand what you do know and what you do not know, and will give you homework that you'll need to be able to do. And the reason you wanna do all this, is to take this test and study so that you can do it, is so that you can build a very solid uh, PLC template that you can very use to become very efficient at doing your job as a programmer. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, now, now again, this would be a plat regardless of the platform of Siemens or Rockwell. This is this is um, this will work in both platforms. So um, get ready for the test. Now, I recommend that if you, I, I recommend that you get a pencil and a paper. Okay, what you don't know, what uh, any notes that you want to take. Now is the time to take it, all right? This is very important uh, for your personal growth. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, first thing you want to be able to do is program for your main routine, and that's Siemens or Rockwell, okay? Be able to program for the main routine. If you cannot do that, you know what your homework is. Very simple. Okay, second one. Can you program for a soft start? You know, I want to make sure that my air systems, for example, my air systems are all energized to the air pressure that I need before I'm, I'm able to do anything on the machine. Uh, and I'm going to start my system up softly because a lot of times, think about it, valves open and they close and things start up and they hit hard and we don't want that. We want to be able to bring our systems up and we want our, our cylinders to be uh, energize. We want our system to start softly and not crap, you know, go hard. That's just an example. But you want to be able to program for a soft start. Okay. You want to be able to program um, for an enable start. Now, enable start is um, I'm enabling the system, the machine, to be able to be controlled manually, but it is not an auto cycle. So I want to enable the machine to have some manual and or auto control, right? So I'm enabling it. That's very important. Okay, you want to be able to program for nests. And really, the big thing is if you can do two, you can do three, you can do five, you can do ten, but different nests. i be able to identify uh, that you have two different, maybe two different parts in your machine. All right? Very important. You're going to overlook this, and, and, and then you're going to get out in the field or you're going to be asked back at the office to program for two different parts on the same machine, two different nests, and it's going to bite you, all right? You can do this. It's very not that complicated. So program for two different nests. All right. We want to be able to uh, program for a light curtain, okay? Now, if you get a if you get a light curtain system that has a emitter and a receiver, and you can program that, you can programming uh, that light curtain, it doesn't matter what brand, you should do fine with any light curtain uh, system that you use. So, can you program for a light curtain? All right, can you program for an auto and manual mode? Okay, very important. Some machines are all manual, some machines uh, give you the option for an auto cycle, and you wanna be able to, con to program for the control to be able to turn a system in to auto or back in the manual, okay? You want that that control. All right, can you um, program an auto sequence? Now, you would say that, may, that, that seems simple, but can you do it? Have you put together a multi-step auto sequence? So you would enable my system, have manual control, turn it into to an auto mode, hit your auto start, and have that go through an auto sequence. If you've not done it, you know what your homework is, right? Okay, so can you program for machine faults? If you can if you can program the machine for three, four faults, 
it's all then that how how many faults you have can you program for faults so um and mind you 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 got to you you need to program faults let's the thing about this that's going to likely happen in your auto cycle so it's going to get caught your machine's going to have a fault and then you have to be able to create a condition that you can put the machine in manual clear your faults you know get the machine ready to go back into an auto cycle you got to walk and think through all those steps that's going to be involved for an auto sequence Look, if you do this and you can think it off the top of your head and you can program for it, um, it's it's an algorithm very important to understand. And this doesn't have to be a highly complex, you know, 32 step auto sequence. A seven or 10 or, you know, even five step auto sequence is all you really need because all you're doing with, by having more steps is just repeating the same thing. But you want to have several steps that, that, then we'll have a fault in an auto sequence. Now what do you do? And if you can program for that, that's what we're looking for. Make sense? Okay. So sensors, you need to be able to have your input sensors. Okay. And it doesn't matter what kind of sensor. It could be a laser sensor. Let's assume it's not an analog, but it could be, you know, a, a um, laser sensor. It could be, um, you know, switches. It could be all kinds of different things. Can you program for sensors inputs right okay obviously can you program for outputs do you lights motor lights solenoids um indicator lights motors and solenoids if you can program for those three that's what we're looking for okay very simple now here's one that is not used by a lot of programmers but the way i was taught is back check monitoring okay uh, this section of code is, is meant to monitor sens the sensors at any time during your auto cycle. So, as your sequence is going on, you're monitoring, you're back checking those sensors. And if anything goes wrong, that's what's going to throw your faults. Okay? So, I like to add in back check monitoring. All right. Can you program for bypass? Let's assume that for whatever reason, you have two nests and one of the nests uh, you have a problem with the sensor, um, and but you can run without it. You, you're setting up a, a workstation to rework it, but you need to run these machine, this these parts in this machine. Can you bypass, set up a bypass on a sensor and an input? All right. Um, just as an example, can you program for bypass? Simple. All right. Okay. So now you have a part in the machine. The next, the third. 13th um, algorithm is can you program for parts never cleared? Now, again, some people don't program for this. They would not ask you. But if if you take out a part and you go to put in another part and you go to hit your auto cycle, but some part of that, some component didn't come out but you're trying to reset, so it never cleared that, right? You're trying to you, you, you're trying to restart a new part, then you're going to discover that it never cleared, and you're going to get a fault, right? You're going to get a message telling you, "Hey, that never cleared." Now that might be you could do it where where a robot is moving your part, right? And it never cleared station two before you start station three. Never cleared, you want to know what's going on there. All right. So program for never cleared condition. All right. You want to be able to program for reset. Do you know how to reset your entire system? Remember, we're going to potentially we're going to crash or damage something. Can we get our position our machine into a manual cycle? Can we clear it? Can we put everything, uh, you know, in a resettable condition and then hit reset and get our machine ready to go back into an auto cycle? Very important, right? I'm going to beat up this uh, mic. All right. Um, and you'll notice I use my hands a lot. It's just what I do. That's how I speak. All right. So um, can you program for a home, right? So um, I'm glancing at my notes here, essentially. But um, so we want to be able to get program for a home condition. So in home, right? So if, if I crash my machine, I have my cylinders 
extended, right? Then I, it, to put it in a home position, I need to put it in manual. I want to be able to extract the damaged part. So I need to bring all, so I may head home, and, I, and if I can safely head home, and bring all my cylinders back, for example, right? Clear that part, reset my machine, make sure everything's cleared out of there before I start my new, next cycle. You got to be able to ha hit a button and have the machine go to a home position, all right? Now, uh, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but you may not ever have a machine um likely i won't say you won't ever but you may not have a home position on your next machine but you're likely going to at some point and having having in your template and having in your program the ability to understand how to create a, a, a an algorithm to put your machine in a home position that's very important understanding what does that look like what does it take that's very important okay all right, so now you need a cycle start algorithm. How am I going to start my cycle, all right? You need to accommodate for all the conditions your machine needs to be in before starting an auto cycle, okay? So I'm going to start it. I need to know what everything needs to be, the way it needs to be, and then I'm going to start my auto cycle, right? Start that cycle start, boom. It's going to go right into its auto sequence. So I need to really understand what that machine's doing and what it looks like and, and all the conditions that need to be uh, considered before I hit that cycle start, right? All right. So, and you may get a, let me give you an example. You may hit cycle start and then get a fault that you haven't got some pins or clips or something in the machine uh, before you hit cycle start. So, oh, I missed that. You put that part in there and now you're ready to go. Okay, very important. All right, so HMI. Accommodate for, in, in the PLC, be able to accommodate for an HMI input and output status. Um, so you're, you're going to need to be able to use this code to communicate with the HMI, the entire machine, and indicate the I.O. status of the HMI. All right, very important. Do you know how to program uh, for HMI input and output status? All right, um, HMI manual control, very important. You want to be able to control your... Uh, machine via the HMI. So you got communication issue considerations. You've got, you know, your HMI buttons over here and you got your program here and you got your machine. So can you program for an HMI um, control, right? What about HMI messaging? Do you know how to, to program for HMI messaging? In your PLC program, can you program uh, so that it'll send the HMI, trigger the HMI messaging. All right? Do you know how to do that? If you don't, you need, you know what you need to do. You need to learn that, right? Okay. Can you can you program for a password? Very simple. If you don't know how to do that, you know what your homework is. All right? Okay. Psychocom. That's pretty clear. You need to be able to keep track of how many cycles this machine's running. Now, maybe it's for PM purposes. That might be for production uh, tracking, whole bunch of considerations. Now, you may need to have a first, second, and third shift. You may um, have to someday later on, and as you become a more advanced program, uh, uh, maybe for uh, specific people, uh, operators, excuse me, who will enter in their, their uh, ID card number. There's a whole lot of considerations later on. Right now, what we're focused on, can you program for a cycle count? Simple. All right. Can you program for and down lights? Let's assume that you have a red, a yellow, and an amber. Okay. So can you, can you program for those and tie that into your whole entire program for the relevant conditions? Green might be your red, green might be in a, in a enable ready state. Everything looks good. I'm ready to go. Red might be I'm running, or some people use red. There's a problem. It just depends on how you want to build your program. But can you program for an and on light? Um, and finally, can you can you program for parts missing? Remember, I told, I mentioned that earlier. Um, I go to hit my cycle start, and the machine won't run. I get an HMI message that tells me that I'm missing a part. Oh, I got to put that part in over here. Great, I get it in there. 
Uh, everything's green on the board. Boom. Hit my cycle start. All right. So these are the 23 um, algorithms that I think that every POC programmer should know. Every new POC programmer needs to know. Um, and it's a, it's a great little test for you. Do you know these algorithms? And if you don't, you know what you need to study. It's very simple. Now, I can't do this for you. I, you, you can write these down, which I recommend that you do. Ask yourself, do you know how to do it? If you don't, work on it. I guarantee you, if you, you study these 23 algorithms and you put it together into a template, you're going to have a very strong program. And you're going to have a, a real nice level of competency um, when talking to prospective employers. All right. So until next time, this is Paul with Logix Magazine. And again, if you have any questions, ask the questions down below. Uh, feel free to, to um, subscribe. That's important um, so that you can be notified of any upcoming videos um, that we got coming on. All right. So until next time, stay safe, my friends.